Welcome to a new Selfish OS podcast. And this time around, it's not only about Selfish OS, it is about the application Calcurse that I showed you in one of my last Selfish OS videos, where I was talking about a perfect Linux CLI desktop that can run under Selfish OS. And this time around, I want to present to you a bit in a little bit more detail the application Calcurse that was part of this. So I have it running here on my uh, laptop, on my main machine. And of course I could connect to my Selfish OS device and execute Calcurse there as well. But for the sake of simplicity, I will do this here right now. I'm executing it also with uh, the English language so you can understand what's going on. So let's start Calcus first, and w this is what it presents to you, the default user interface. You can see data files found, data will be loaded now, press enter to continue, and it will then start uh, loading data. In this case, I deleted all the data before I created this uh, screencast here. So we have three different things that you can see here on the screen, and the one marked currently in red is the calendar. Then we have a to-do. I can switch with a tab key to, uh, in this case it wants to go to the appointments first. So we go to appointments here and you can see we see all the appointments for the current date which is the 3rd of December. If I go uh, with a tab key to the next item you can see the to-do item where I have the option to add some to-do lists or notes that I yeah, want to do. So if it's not an appointment uh, then I can add it in here. To add a simple to-do, all I have to do is just press the A button. You can see there's a nice little uh, in instruction here on the bottom which tells you what to do. So the A button means add an item. Then it will ask me for the new to-do item name. So I say record screencast, hit enter. I can give it a priority, either non-priority or the highest priority, which is one, or the lowest priority, which is nine. And I would say this is the highest priority right now. So you can see we have a new to-do entry with the number one here. I can, of course, add another entry, which will, will be like upload screencast. And this one I give the priority two because it comes after this. but. In this case, I can also say I don't want any priority on it if I don't want it. The cool thing is, by default, it will save everything, but you can see there's the S key. So if you press the S key, it will save the data manually. So if you want to do this, you can do this as well. And you have some other options here as well, like importing stuff. If I click import, enter the file name to import data from. So it has the possibility to import data from various files mainly the files that you exported with uh, this application. So where there is import, there's also export. So if I want to export my to-do list, I can just press X here and I can say then as what I want to export this. I have iCal and PCal format and I can choose here what I want to do. In this case, I press escape. The iCal format is very, very uh, universal, I would say. You can use it in various different applications. But you can see also already from the format iCal, which stands for Intelligent Calendar, I think, it is more an application for calendar and appointment creation than for to-do creation. So we have some other options here as well in to-do as well, like deleting an item. So if I finish recording my screencast, I can just go with the arrow keys or I can also use the Vim key layout, uh, HJKL and um, yeah, JKL, I think it's the <laughs> correct one. Anyway, I can delete an item by pressing the D key and then do you really want to delete this task? I can say yes and now this task is deleted. You can see that the priority didn't change. If I want to change the priority, you can see that I have other commands here because not all commands fit into this window. And if I press this one, you can see I have some other uh, commands here, just like the V key for viewing, which will show any longer to do in this to do's in this uh, viewing field or I have edit item. If I click edit item, I have the option to edit my to do item. Upload screencast to YouTube in this case, for example. Now you can see that I cannot read upload uh, screencast to you, to you. <laughs> 
So if I want to view the whole title, I can press the V key and it will show up the whole title. And of course, on longer to do notes as well. Then I have some options like flag an item. So I have the option to flag the item. You can see now it is crossed out and I can also undo this as well. So if I want to keep um, up with my um, items that I've done this day, for example, I can flag them, so cross them out. And the same I can do with um, the item, the priority. I can go higher or lower. So I can press the plus button, it goes up. Uh, the priority goes down, I think. Three is down and uh, minus is up. So I can press, uh, you can see here, uh, I can set it to one if I want to, or I can set it to none. If I go past the one and hit the minus key, I go to none. So let's have it uh, two here and I will add uh, my priority one record screencast on calculus and I give it the priority one and as you can see here if I give it the priority one it automatically goes in to the top of my uh, to the top of my to-do list so this is also very important then I have also the possibility for every to-do that I have to add a note to this to-do if I press the N key as you can see here uh, the end key it will open up Vim in this case because this is the default editor that I have but it will open up in Pico Nano or whatever is the default editor in your case and then you have the option to just simply add something so I will say uh, I could have some notes in here um, show the to do app in Calcus show the calendar in calculus and so on and I can just save it and this is now associated with this one and you can see also uh, that it has a little arrow key here which indicates that there is more there's a note you can view the note uh, by the same arrow key that you can see here so the greater uh, S sign so if I hit the greater S sign it will show me the note here in my default uh, viewer which is I think less in this case on my system uh, and it might be more on the safe system so this is also possible then of course uh, there is the possibility to uh, up go up and down with the J and uh, K keys like I told you already and there's some other um, commands as well uh, that are for the global usage of the um, app itself just like I have still the possibility to go like one week uh, next or before in the calendar app but for this we just switch to the calendar app and I show you the uh, navigation through the calendar app you can uh, use of course your arrow keys or you can use your win keys as well jkl uh, and h so h jkl to go around here and you can see if I go here to like the force for example the appointments changes also to the force so whatever I have uh, here in focus in the calendar will show up as appointment in the appointments tab so this is pretty nice then we have some other basic commands here uh, like we have the uh, let's go to the other commands first we have the option to import and export again but we can also go to the beginning of a week. This is also using the syntax of um, Vim. So if I press zero, it will go to the beginning of the week. As you can see at the beginning of the week was the November 30s. So it goes to November 30s. If I hit the percentage, nay, the, the dollar sign, it will go to the end of the week, which, is, uh, which in this case is Sunday because my location uh, time zone, uh, the end of the week is Sunday. Um, so it is taking whatever you have as your system's default uh, location. It will take as uh, date and, um, and, and and formatting for the calendar itself. Then we have also the app option, of course, to add an appointment. In this case, you can see the add appointment one is Control and A that I have to press in this case. And um, yeah, if I had Control A, it will ask me for the time of the appointment. And this is now the 6th of December. And for the 6th of December, I just say send send uh, Nikolaus day. I'll send Nikolaus simply. Aha, wait a second. The start time. Sorry. The start time. I should have read this before. <laughs> Enter the start time. 
So I can have a start and an end time. In this case, I want to have it in all day event because it's a Saint Nicholas day and then the description and this would be like Saint Ni Nicholas. I think it's written like this, his name. At least in German it's written like this uh, day. And I can press enter and you can see here it has now the appointment here, December the 6th, St. Nicholas Day. So this is uh, working pretty nicely. And if I want to have another appointment on another day, I can just simply switch to another day, like for example here. And then add a new appointment, control A again and say, OK, I have a train to catch at 7 45 in the morning you can see here our hour minute minute or our hour minute minute without the uh, colon in the middle so 7 45 in the morning i have an event what is the uh, uh, the end time of the event this is uh, i think roughly at seven in the night so you can see it uses uh, military time or 24 hours time uh, here this is the uh, default of my location still again and you can change this of course in the settings I'll show you in a minute how to do this so uh, and then the description uh, train uh, ride vacation I have a train ride vacation and as you can see here this is how it looks like then uh, on the 14th 7.45 to uh, 19 train ride vacation um, is here in my appointments and if I go in the calendar to the next one uh, you can see that it also gets a, like a mark like a green mark here that means okay there's something going on the same uh, happens with the sixth one and yeah this is how you add appointments and how you can also add a time frame for those appointments let's say um, it's not a 19 o'clock when I want to um, end my train ride vacation but it is like two hours earlier or it's like a few minutes earlier what I can do of course is edit this and uh, just have to press uh, another button other command I can go of course with the T tab to my appointments I can go f if I even if I have more uh, appointments I can scroll through all of those appointments but I also have the option to just edit the item and of course I could like do it uh, manually but uh, in the calendar application itself and then choose but it's easier to tap into the appointments and then just choose edit and now I have the edit uh, option here I can edit the start time the end time the description or move it around if I have more multiple appointments I can move them around in this case I just want to change the end time and the end time is like uh, 18 55 or something like this and I changed now the end time so this works pretty nicely and we have some other commands here as well like for example we can like uh, press big T for uh, minus one day and it uh, oops uh, I don't want to create a new to-do. Uh, big T for minus one day. You can see in the calendar it jumps to minus one day. Or I can press uh, T button for the next day. You can see here in the calendar how it is moving. So this is also possible. Without moving to the calendar tab, I have the possibility to like, like use those shortcuts as well to move around and uh, some other commands here as well if I want to go to the next year I can use the J uh, now I can use the uh, uh, the Y key not the J key and uh, yeah for today I can just press a uh, control a G and it will go automatically to the uh, today's date which is the 3rd of December then I also have of course some other options here as well like I can paste and add some other commands if I want to so it has like an um, option for entering commands in here and I think it should also have some um, uh, general settings that you can use also you have a help screen that you can just press the question mark key and it will give you a nice little help here in this case is very short <laughs> help and you have the option to let's show the other one edit a note now i'm in to do and uh, other commands i can go to today and redraw something i don't know what the redraw function does i have to say 
doesn't do anything for me at least and of course if i switch to the calendar one i have uh, also some other options here as well if i click on other options i can go to the um, end of the week one day one uh, week uh, with the w key i can go one week forward with um, small w key so no the 10th i can go back to the third with the uh, capital w and i have of course month and so on as well and here i ha also have the config option and this is also what i want to show you if you want to configure like for example the date and time options you just have uh, press the capital c here and now we go to the config options and here you have also the option to go into general configurations layouts sidebar colors uh, notifications and keys so you also have the option to change your keys to whatever you prefer so let's go to general and here we have a list of general op options and you can see i can switch between general options and i have the option for example to turn off auto save automatically saving is turned on by default i would recommend you to leave it as this but if you don't want it you can of course change this general confirm on quit so before you quit it will confirm yes or no in this case i really don't know i can uh, don't need this the the confirmation for quitting so i just press no i don't need this confirmation because it's automatically saving anyway um deleting yes i want a um, confirmation for this use system di dialogues if you want to have um, system dialogues here use the progress bar and you have also like a general first day of the week that you can set up here so you can set it up to sunday if you want to and the format for the output date, you can change it. As you can see here, the big capital D is using basically the format that your system is set into, but you can change it to whatever you like to. You can see here the uh, format uh, options here. And by default, it's like month, day and year, which is like the same default, I would say, of course, in, I think, um, uh, uh, which is not the same default <laughs> this is what i wanted to say so month day and year is not the same uh, default the same default would be like a day month and year which pretty much the whole world uses except i think the united states so we can change this as well like edit the item and i can change i want a second one and uh, now i have day month and year which is used in new zealand which is used in europe and uh, all around the world and of course i have some other options here as well you can see i can scroll down and have also format day heading which i can change so if i'm done here i can just quit out of this and uh, now all the dates should be correct i can go back to the uh, color options here by pressing c uh, i have the option to change colors even you can see the foreground and the background colors for uh, the uh, different things so for example if i want to have blue everything is now in blue as foreground color i can quit out of it and you can see here now it looks blue which is also a nice a little option that you have uh, that you can set up here as well so then we have the layout options so you can see this is the layout with big appointments with a small calendar and a small to do but if i want to change it i can press the l key and here you can see the various different layouts where i have the option to just change the default layout to something else like if i want to have the to do's uh, big and uh, the calendar and appointments small i can just choose this here go to quit and now you can see i have my to do's here big and my appointments small uh, next to the calendar so i have the option to change this as well then if i had the s bar i have the sidebar option and i honestly don't know what it is so press the help here it's not giving me any help uh, i can go up and down it doesn't work so i have no clue what the sidebar option is about and i have the notify option which allows me to have notifications even for simple events so if yes the notifi uh, notify bar will be displayed which is here at the bottom i think it will notify me about stuff and i can change the notification date the type and the warning when a user appointment is within the next notify bar warning seconds it will yeah uh, print a warning and then the command how to print the warning and so on so this can be set up here as well i can even enable a daemon to run in the background if i'd like to and to lock all this stuff so these are all the settings now and i set it up now the way that i like it to be of course if i want to change the keys i can press the k 
key here and can set everything up the way that I like like it with the keys here also for the various different options I can even add items if I want to to perform specific tasks but in this case I don't want to change anything quit out of here and now I'm back to normal so this is basically Calcurse the application that you can use to um, yeah do your appointments and so on and the cool thing is like if you have done all your appointments here you can export them uh, with the X key and you can say I want to export it as iCal format and then you can uh, say okay Calcurse iCal and then you have the option to import this iCal file into your next cloud, into your Google uh, Calendar or whatever is able to understand iCal and then you can import this also to your desktop and share it there with your applications so pretty pretty handy of course you can use it also in Calculus as well to import by using the i key and just import the uh, iCal file as well so that's the small little overview of the Calcurs application. I hope you enjoyed this little uh, video. It was a video request actually by someone who wanted to have a tutorial on how Calcurs works. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, thanks for watching. Until the next time. Bye.